When my brother's wedding day approached, I was excited to be there to celebrate his big moment. However, my sister-in-law shocked me by banning me from the ceremony without explanation. I was hurt and confused until she discovered something about me she hadn't expected. A secret that changed everything. This revelation not only forced her to reconsider her decision, but also reshaped the dynamics within our family. What was meant to exclude me ended up giving me an unexpected advantage, and the situation quickly took a surprising turn. My name is Maya Yates, and I am 23 years old. I work from home and have a kind older brother who is five years older than me and is currently engaged in case. Natalie is 26 years old and has the complete opposite personality to mine. While I struggle with social interactions, Natalie is outgoing and easily makes friends. Natalie has grown close to her parents and frequently returns home on her own. Today was no different. She arrived unexpectedly when the doorbell rang. My mother immediately recognized Natalie and greeted her warmly. Natalie entered the living room with a cheerful, I'm back. But when she saw me, her expression changed to one of surprise. Mama, are you still at home? She inquired, skipping the greeting. I replied that I am working from home. Natalie immediately replied, Enough with that. You should get a real job. Unable to argue, I quietly returned to my workspace. My room is an example of space that I created to pay for myself. It's my safe haven, a place I keep locked and private. The soundproof door must be unlocked before another door can be opened inside. Once inside, I expressed my frustrations aloud. After shouting about my irritation with Natalie's comments, I felt a little relieved. At lunchtime, a small light bulb in my room started blinking, indicating that it was time for a break. I went into the living room, where lunch was set up at the dining table. My mother invited me to sit down, and I took my usual spot on the final tally across from me with a disappointed expression. You get hungry even when you don't work. Don't you ever consider contributing to the household? You're like a parasite, Natalie said harshly. I kept my head down, listening quietly as my parents joined the table and said, Grace, Natalie was visibly upset with my parents for not disciplining me. Mia, your parents are too lenient with you. I can't feel comfortable marrying into this family if things continue like this, she said angrily. Natalie became increasingly dissatisfied as she ate her lunch. She expressed her concerns about what would happen if my parents could no longer care for me, implying that it would be unfair for her or her future children to shoulder that responsibility. Her assumption that I would remain independent upset me, so I stopped eating, mentally protesting her claims. My mother noticed my distress and reassured Natalie, Maya does work, you know. Do not worry. But Natalie remained unconvinced. Who would believe you were working at 23, given your appearance, braided hair, thick glasses, and habit of wearing sweatpants? She challenged, frustrated. I replied softly, Assurance has nothing to do with work. This appeared to enrage Natalie even more. So, Tommy, what kind of job do you do? She demanded, glaring at me. Natalie's intense stare made me too afraid to speak. My mother intervened. Only our family knows about my job, she said. I apologize, but we cannot discuss it right now. Natalie, visibly frustrated, stood up and stormed out, exclaiming, So I'm not a member of this family, is that it? I apologized to my parents for the incident, and my father smiled to reassure me. Don't worry about it, Mia. Simply focus on doing what you enjoy. Feeling a little lighter, I decided to continue with dinner. During the meal, I mentioned that after my brother's wedding, I'd make sure Natalie knew about my job. My parents appear to agree, and their expressions have relaxed, indicating that it could be a good idea. After lunch, I continued working in the evening as usual. I went grocery shopping with my mother, while my father watered and prepared the vegetables in our garden for harvest. We returned from the supermarket to find Natalie in tears in the living room, with my father sitting beside her. My mother, worried, inquired as to what was wrong. Why are you crying so hard? Natalie clung to my mother, sobbing uncontrollably and unable to speak. I noticed my father's concerned expression and asked him what had happened. I heard a loud noise from inside the house while I was in the garden, he explained. So I rushed toward the sound. He pointed to a crowbar and hammer lying on the table. When I realized what had happened, I rushed to my room. When I got to the door, 
I discovered that it had been severely damaged, as if by someone. I attempted to force it open using the tools. I was paralyzed by shock and fear. My father contacted my brother, who lived in the company dormitory, and told him about the situation. My brother agreed to come over as soon as he finished work. I decided to stay in my room until he arrived, hoping to relax once I was settled. I contacted my employer and obtained permission to inform Natalie, who would soon become a member of our family, about the nature of my job, following her marriage to my brother. When the room light flickered, I assumed my brother had arrived. When I left my room, I was surprised to see him already at the door. I gasped, and he apologized. Sorry for startling you, he said, not looking at me but at the damaged door. Natalie's actions must have shocked him. When I told him not to worry about it and that I would replace the door myself, he said firmly, No, that will not do. Natalie will make up for this. My brother took my hand and led me to the living room where Natalie and her parents were. As soon as we walked in, he addressed Natalie sternly. I had no idea you were so violent. Everyone turned to face my brother, who was rarely seen angry. He continued, apologized properly, and made amends for the door. Natalie, visibly upset, begins to apologize tearfully. I apologize. I'm very sorry, she said, but my brother cut her off. The apology is not for me, he said, leering at her fiercely. I told my brother everything was fine now, but he kept his gaze fixed on Natalie. Natalie then turned to me, knelt down, and apologized. I will not do anything like this again. I will compensate for the damage. I accepted her apology and decided to move on from the incident. However, I was curious as to why this had happened, so I asked Natalie. She responded, I thought if I made a scene, you would be forced to work. I considered telling her about my job before the wedding, but because it would be against company policy, I decided to keep it to myself for now, to relieve the tension between my brother and Natalie. I took out two live concert tickets from my room and gave one to each of them. Natalie's eyes grew wide with excitement as she saw the tickets. These are for Ames's concert, she exclaimed, turning bright red with delight. She looked at my brother and said, let us go. Her face was beaming with happiness. My brother inquired, are you sure these are hard to get? I responded, I happen to have them. You can use them as a peace offering if you prefer. Seeing their delighted reactions made me happy as well. The positive vibes returned, and everyone was able to forget about the damaged door and enjoy the rest of the meal. Natalie came to my house on the day of the concert while I was out to express her gratitude. She told my parents to enjoy themselves because I wasn't at home. Man decided to work outside, and the concert was fantastic. I'm glad she made that decision. After the concert, my brother called me. He had previously separated from Natalie because of a company drinking party. He was ecstatic and said the concert was incredible. Natalie is a huge Amy fan who has always wanted to get tickets to the annual concert. She was overjoyed to see Amy and fulfill her long-held wish. Natalie told me on the way home that the name was adorable and beautiful and that her songs and lyrics were fantastic. I told my brother I was glad we had made up. He replied that the compensation for the soundproof door we paid for was $7,000. I replied... That sounds about right. He was taken aback. That's expensive. Explain that because it was a soundproof room, I had put a lot of time and money into the components, which surprised them even more. Natalie stated that, while the $7,000 cost was painful, the concert compensated for it. As for me, the door would be fixed, and seeing my brother and his friends get along made me feel very good about giving them the tickets— Despite Natalie's continued misunderstanding of my work-from-home job, he believed I had begun working outside following the concert and was pleased with what she saw as progress. When she realized her mistake, she started calling and visiting my house on a daily basis, insisting that I get a job. I had hoped to withstand demands until the wedding, but things only got worse. Despite my desire to avoid seeing her until then, Natalie frequently pressed the call light switch to summon me whenever I left my room for the living room. She'd nag me about getting a job before the wedding, and she didn't want a jobless person in the family to distract her. I began giving her a variety of merchandise, including mascots and file cases from my previous company. She was initially thrilled with the AIM products, but she soon began to wonder why I had so much merchandise— I reluctantly explained that a friend who works for Amy's company gives them to me. 
Hearing this, Natalie's mood improved even more. She requested that you get me more tickets the next time. However, she began to demand more merchandise and made a big deal about wanting to enter my room. I was concerned that she would damage the door again, so I issued her a stern warning. Natalie, I told you firmly that if you break the door again, it will not be just the door fee this time. Last time I paid for the repairs. However, the next time you will be responsible for paying the bill. Her face turned pale, and I wondered if she really intended to damage the door again. I could only hope that the wedding would end soon so that I could be free from this situation until the big day. Natalie's visits and the flashing call light remained constant. I lost track of how many times I'd already shouted enough for my room. I tried talking to my brother about it, but he seemed resigned, saying, I've told Natalie 100 times that my work, but she just doesn't listen. In my mind, I wanted to tell my brother to be as angry as he was when the door was broken, but I knew that wasn't an option. He was busy finishing up work before the wedding, so he could go on his honeymoon, so I had no choice but to give up. It was finally the day before the wedding. Our parents had planned to spend the day together, so we had a fun evening reminiscing and looking through old family albums. It was nice to have all four of us together after such a long time. When I mentioned that after I married, my brother's family would leave, leaving only the three of us with our parents, I noticed that it seemed a little lonely. My brother reassured me, No, no, I will come by and spend the day with you. I was pleased to hear that. In the quiet of the evening, my brother's cell phone rang. Natalie asked to speak with me. He handed me the phone and said, Natalie wants to talk to you. When I responded, Natalie said, Hey, Amy is having a problem. There will be a major announcement tomorrow. Ask the friend who gave you the merchandise what it is about. What if she quits or takes a hiatus? Amy's agency had reportedly announced a major announcement on social media for the following day. I said I didn't know and hung up the phone, not wanting to disturb my relaxing family time. My brother appeared to share my sentiment and turned off his cell phone. Our father reminded us that we needed to get up early the next day. My brother bowed deeply and thanked his father and mother for taking care of him for so long. From now on, I will be pleased with Natalie. My mother quickly replied, That's what women do when they marry. When my brother questioned her, our family ended the night before the wedding with a big laugh. Finally, the wedding day came. I informed my family that I would arrive late in the morning while my parents and brother went to the venue. When I arrived at the venue later, I went to the waiting room to congratulate Natalie. I knocked on the door, and there she was, the stunning bride, sitting alone and fully prepared. Natalie's demeanor changed dramatically as I prepared to congratulate her. She scowled at me and said, Hey, there's something I still need to address from yesterday, when you hung up the phone. I apologized and asked what she wanted. She said curtly, You can go home now. I responded, but it is my brother's wedding. She replied, I have been telling you this for a long time. Why didn't you land a job? I don't want people to think you're part of the family. Before I could protest, Natalie moved closer, almost nose to nose with me and said, if I say go home, go home. She slammed the door shut with force. I am feeling down. I retreated to a private room that had been reserved for me. There, I had my makeup and hair done by professionals before changing into the cocktail dress I had purchased for the wedding, preparing for my brother's wedding, which I would not be attending. In the middle of this, my parents called me. I explained the situation, assuring them that even though I wouldn't be attending the wedding, I planned to celebrate in my own way as the ceremony began. I chose to watch the event on the venue's monitor to feel more connected. When my brother looked for me, I nearly burst into tears, but I reminded myself that it was a day to celebrate, not cry, and I continued to watch and send my blessings. Following the ceremony, the female MC announced that there would be a special celebration video for the show's stars. Please look at the monitor. The room darkened, and a video started playing. The screen displayed an image of Amy, whom Natalie adored, and Amy sent a congratulations message— Yes, and truthfully, I am A.M.E. Fans, congratulations on your marriage, brother and Natalie. 
Natalie's eyes widened in surprise as she looked at my brother, who appeared to be saying, that's me. The video continued with me providing a simple excuse for my absence, stating that I had urgent matters to attend to. I also apologize for not informing you that I am now a member of your new family. However, I've decided to work overseas, and we will most likely not see each other again, so feel free to pretend we're not related. And I was not a recluse. I was working from my home studio. Despite a hint of sarcasm, I ended my message with, I wish you happiness. As the lights turned back on, all eyes were on the tally. She looked like a pal, a ghost, and was completely stunned. My part was completed. I left the venue with the hair and makeup artists and other employees. Later, my brother called me. Natalie was supposed to thank the guests and say goodbye after we left, but instead she spent her time frantically searching for me when she realized I had already left. She broke down and cried in front of the folding screen. I've also heard from friends that she's now known as the bride, despite not being considered family by name, and my wedding speech has gone viral on social media. She regrets her actions and now finds it difficult to venture out in her neighborhood.